This video is going to go over a conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability of event B occurring, knowing that event A has already occurred. We could calculate conditional probability by either using a reduced sample space or a formula. And in this video, I'm going to really be recommending the reduced sample space option rather than memorizing a formula. Let's look at an example. So a die is rolled. What's the probability of landing on a five if you already know it lands on an odd number? So normally when you roll a die, if we were to make a sample space, we would have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those would be our options when we roll a die. But we already know that it lands on an odd number. So two, four, and six are removed from the sample space. If you look what's left, there are three values, three elements left in this sample space, and one of them is a five, so we would get one-third as our answer. If you prefer, you can use a formula. So this is the probability of B given A, so this vertical line here means given. So this is the intersection of A and B, the probability of the intersection of A and B. Remember, this means and or intersection. Over the probability of A, and that's assuming that A came first. So if we were looking at this again, so probability of B given A. And then that's divided by, or that's equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. If we were looking at this and you wanted to swap it, you certainly could. We could find the probability of A given B. And the numerator of the formula will be the same, except we'll replace probability of B down here. When the events are independent, that means they don't impact one another, you might notice that the probability of B given A is just the probability of B. And the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. All of this sounds wordy and complicated, and it's a formula that I personally am not recommending, as I said through this video. I'm going to go with the reduced sample space method. All right, let's look at some examples. Suppose you draw a card from a standard playing deck. What's the probability that the card is a 10 if you already know the card is red? Well, when you have, I'm not going to draw the full sample space of a deck of cards, but we'd have 52 options, right? So when we have a standard deck, we have 52 cards. But now that we know that the card is red, that sample space is not 52 anymore. It doesn't have 52 elements. It now has 26 cards. And we have to think to ourselves, well, how many of those are going to be a 10? Okay, so out of those 26 cards, I would have a 10 of diamonds. And I would have a 10 of hearts. So two out of those 26 would be a 10. And we could reduce that as well to give us 1 over 13. Number two, a die is rolled. What's the probability that it lands on a multiple of two? If you already know, it lands on a number greater than or equal to four. Well, this is similar to our example above. So we know the sample space for rolling a die is the numbers one through six. If we know that and we're given that it's greater than or equal to four, we know it doesn't land on one, two, or three. So now we want to know what's the probability it is a multiple of two. So four and six are multiples of two. That's two of the three elements, so two thirds. Number three, a number from one to 20 is drawn at random. What's the probability is the number is a four, given that the number is even? Well, let's think about this for our, a second. When we have the numbers one through 20, that's a total of 20 numbers. But if we know that it's even, that sample space is being reduced and only half of those numbers are going to work. Only half of those values are even. So there are 10 numbers really in our sample space. How many of those 10 numbers are four? Just one of them. So our probability that the number is even would be one out of 10. All right, number four is a little bit different. 
Two coins are tossed. What is the probability they both land on heads if you already know the first coin landed on heads? So let's write this out a little bit different here. So we have coin one and we have coin two. So coin one would have been a one half, right? But we already know that it landed on heads, okay? We already know what happened to it. And by that one half, I mean the probability of getting heads or tails on a coin is one half, but we already know the answer to that. We know it's heads. Is coin two impacted by the flip of coin one? No, right? The result of coin one is not impacting coin two at all. That's why these events are considered to be independent. So the probability of getting heads is just one half. And really this whole coin one information here is just extra information. We're really just looking for what's the probability a coin lands on heads. All right, for number five, we're gonna now look at a two-way frequency table. Haley took a survey of 100 juniors and seniors to see whether they preferred hamburgers or hot dogs. The results are summarized in the table below. If one student is selected at random, what's the probability they prefer hamburgers given they are a junior? Okay, so let's just go over how to read the table for a second here. So going horizontally, there's the junior row. 45 juniors picked hamburgers as their preference. Eight juniors picked hot dogs and there were a total of 53 juniors surveyed. In the next row, Seniors, 27 of them picked hamburgers as their preference, 20 picked hot dogs, and 47 seniors were surveyed in total. And then the total row just tells you how many total people picked hamburgers, how many total picked hot dogs, regardless of what grade they're in. All right, so now let's look at this here. This is like our whole sample space we can think about it as, and now we're going to narrow it down or reduce it. We want to know what's the probability they prefer hamburgers given they are a junior. So all we care about is this part that they are juniors, okay? So you can almost ignore and cross this information off because we're not concerned in this problem about what happens if they're a senior or what the totals are. So for juniors, there's 53 of them that were surveyed. How many preferred hamburgers? That's 45. So very simply, we get 45 over 53. So the idea is really just reducing that sample spot, uh, sample space, and then the answer becomes quite obvious from the table. All right, one last question, but we're going to look at a Venn diagram now. 200 students were surveyed to see if they like watching television or playing video games. The results are in the Venn diagram shown below. If a student is chosen at random, find each of the probabilities. All right, let's just look at um, A, B, and C for a second here. A, notice this is just the probability of selecting television. There's no condition here. Whereas in B and C, notice that vertical bar, that's our condition. So we'll just pay attention to that for those. All right, the probability of selecting television. So how many students, I'm gonna erase, circle and erase here. How many students like television? Well, that's 103 plus 26, so that gives me 129. How many total students were there? 200. All right, I'm going to erase what I circled now. So I'm just focusing on the piece that is uh, relevant to each question here. For B, what's the probability the student chosen likes television given that they don't like video games? So we know they don't like video games. So all of this, everything in this, I like video games, I prefer video games, is not part of our sample space anymore. We're reducing and narrowing the sample space down. So if I look, there's now 122 people left in this sample space, right? The 103 plus the 19 who don't like either. How many of them like television? 103. All right, I'm gonna erase my picture again. And now I wanna know what's the probability that the student chosen doesn't like television given that they like video games. Okay, so now we are looking at this part here, right? We know they like video games, so we don't care about this part, okay? It's kinda like we're reversing our sample space here. So total, I'm looking at 26 plus 52 students so 78, 
How many of them do not like television? That's 52 because this 52 means they're only um, enjoying video games, not both. And that would be our probability. Hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about conditional probability. Other videos in this playlist will go over other concepts related to set theory and probability.